Hey, everybody. This is Lori Wilson with EXP Realty, Real Estate for the Tri-State Team, and my business partner, Rebecca. Hi. <laughs> Rebecca Holmes. Rebecca Holmes. Rebecca Holmes. We, um, we've decided that we're doing these videos that on, and we're going to post them on every Wednesday on social media, this power through Wednesday video. And it's really just to help educate the public and let them know how our business works. And hopefully we'll also be able to sprinkle in here some good stories, funny stories yeah. and things that we experience. Um, but one of the things I, I, I found out a few days ago when I was talking to one of my sellers is that that they didn't understand how the multiple listing service works, right? Mm -hmm. And so I thought maybe we could talk about that a little bit today. Um, yeah. In West Virginia, we have, I want to say, like 15 different boards and MLSs somewhere around there. And, um, and they're all independent. So the multiple listing service is uh, like a portal for agents that live in those areas to put their listings in so that other agents who are also members mm -hmm. um, can see what's for sale. And um, when you say board, let's clarify that a little bit too. So we've got... Different. Uh, like, for instance, I belong to the Kanawha Valley Board of Realtors. Yes. And then you belong to multiple of them, but mainly right. Huntington. Mainly Huntington's my primary. Uh, and and some of the MLSs have more than one board that's affiliated with them. So like North Central West Virginia MLS has, I want to say, Morgantown, Clarksburg, yep. Bridgeport, Fairmont and maybe even, I can't remember, there was another, Harrison County. So, I think that yeah, so they're, they're, you know, but the thing is, is that, you know, it's a, like I said, it's a portal. And, and so there's a board and then there's the MLS. The MLS is actually the local association. Mm -hmm. the associations are members of the state association, which is the West Virginia Association of Realtors. And then West Virginia is a member of the National Association of Realtors. We pay dues to be a member of all of that. Yeah. We pay local dues, state dues, and national dues. Um, mm -hmm. Gosh, that's another subject we should talk about are the expenses. Oh, yeah. I think that, um, you know. What it actually costs to be in the business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I think a lot of people don't take that into account when we're talking about commissions um and they're like well you know what does it cost you okay take some pictures like right. you know hire a photographer right. to, you know, spend a right. couple hundred dollars all on you're that. doing is putting a sign in the yard yeah, oh, exactly okay. so yeah and, and we are independent contractors so yes. as realtors we run our own business yes it, you know we do belong to a brokerage yeah. um but we are running our own business. So there are a lot of expenses that all fall on us to mm -hmm. keep our business running, marketing. Yeah. Yep. I think everything yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, not all real estate agents are realtors. It's not realtor. It's real tour. Uh, mm -hmm. Not all agents are realtors. Some are just real estate agents. And the difference is that Realtors are a member of the state, national, and local associations. Real estate agents are not. Realtors are held to a higher standard. We have a code of ethics, professional standards, you know, things that we are have to adhere to. Um, and um, and so when you're getting a realtor, you're getting someone that um, you know has to follow those those ethics and and all those guidelines and all those things, but. You know, the state associations, um, like I said, they're a portal for listing brokerages, agents, to put the houses that they've listed in that portal so that other agents who are members see that, see the information, and then, you know, if they have buyers, they send that information to their buyers. The mm -hmm. other thing that happens is that um, you'll, you know, because most buyers search on third-party sites like Realtor.com, Zillow, Trulia, those third-party sites have a feed straight into our multiple listing services. And mm -hmm. 
you know, this is a subject that, that bugs me because, um, I, I've been on an agent since 2010. Now, before that, apparently they used to have real estate books, like a book, a book. And so the real estate agents were the only ones that had that information. So if you wanted to sell a house or buy a house, you had to call the real estate agent or the realtor, sit down face to face with them, go through a book, literally. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. um, and so now it isn't that way. Everything's virtual now. Um, buyers come look wild. Themselves. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Themselves. And, and so, um, but here's, I was going to say, what happened is that the local association sold that feed to those third-party sites. Those third-party sites wouldn't be as powerful as they are today if our local associations would not have sold the feed to them. So we're creating the business. They're selling the feed to, let's just say, Realtor.com, for example. Then Realtor.com turns around with that buyer information and seller information and says, Hey, real estate agent, realtor, I'll sell you these names and phone numbers. <laughs> like, wait a minute, wait a minute. That came from my MLS. Why would I try yeah. to pay for it? I'm already yeah. paying to be a member. So I, it, it bugs me. It's a thing that really bothers me that our MLS has sold that information because mm -hmm. now here we are, right? Yeah. Real estate agents are really bad about realtors are really bad about taking mm -hmm. themselves out of the equation right of representation yeah and i think with the mls um you know i mentioned lee brown before and lee brown mm -hmm. uh was someone we went to her uh a conference that she had well it wasn't even a conference it was her like a training continuing education is what continuing we education yeah. that we had back in february right. And that was the first time I had been exposed to her and she's awesome. And I now, you know, listen to her YouTube videos and, and watch all that and everything. But she was saying that the MLS multiple listing service is really the last bastion of a true um, free marketplace that we have because it, you don't filter through um, you know, there's, there's nothing impeding everyone from seeing right. the same results, right? She said, compared to your Facebook, your Facebook right. feed shows you exactly what your Facebook feed wants to show you. You don't get to choose what right. you see on your Facebook feed, right? Right. But on the MLS, you put in your criteria, you put in acreage that you're looking for, bedrooms, bathrooms, area, um, if there's a specific area your clients are looking for. And that's what it is. It's not who's selling the house. It's not, um, you, obviously price is, you know, is oh, part of course. that criteria as well, putting in their right. budget, right? but you're not making any um, decisions based off of who's selling the house, their race, their origin, right. their well, origin, yeah, like that. Because the fair so, housing, we have to follow the fair housing. I mean, it's, exactly. it's yeah. So it is really the last, and, and, and it and it gives you every single, um, if you have multiple criteria or searches that are the same criteria, it will give the same answers for every single person. Yes. So every oh, yeah. person is able to see the exact same results. Right. Yep. I mean, you know, if we get a buyer, well, you know, I do the same thing with sellers. If I go to list a property, I pull up the, and I'll do this while they're sitting next to me. Uh, we sit at the kitchen table and yeah. I'll pull up the multiple listing service in the area that the house is in. And I'll say, this is what's sold. This is comparable to yours. This is what's sold in the last six months. Cause that's what appraisers do. So appraisers have to show what's sold in the last six months that's comparable. Right. They're allowed to add active listings if they want to, but they have to show three that have sold. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's part of coming up with a listing price, right? Because there's, you know, we don't have a crystal ball. We can't see in the future, but, um, you know, we can look at the past and what the past has happened. Right. Um, and so, you know, I do that with sellers and buyers. 
right? Uh, not just to search, you know, criteria that a buyer is looking for to purchase, but also if they find the house they want, we go back to that multiple listing service and do a comp search exactly, to make sure that they're offering something that will appraise yeah. and, and we can close on because, you know, it's, again, that six month period. Um, now I've, I've been told that appraisers can expand their area a little bit and go back a little bit farther in time if they're having trouble finding mm -hmm. comps, but I don't know how often that, that happens. Now during COVID, they were doing what they call desktop appraisals, yeah. which means they were not going into homes because mm -hmm. of COVID. So, um, and that, Whew, I, that catapulted prices and all kinds of crazy things. But, yeah. but you know, the multiple listing service essentially is a portal for us to help buyers and sellers buy and sell homes. That's, yeah. and they're all different. And every dues paying member yes. it has the exact same yes. um, access, access to all the same information. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right. And you know, it's not even just realtors that have access. It can be, appraisers because appraisers are realtors don't know if anybody knew that or not but appraisers do have a real estate license a re they are realtors um, sometimes it can be anybody that had that would have anything to do with a real estate transaction for some places it can be you know um, inspection ho home inspectors it can be appraisers it can be um, you know ter the termite guy photographers lenders you know, I've seen so, attorneys on there. Are there, are there, there are some attorneys. attorneys. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. they are. And so, you know, that we uh, people that pay the dues, they have, you know, access to that information. Um, I don't think that the MLSs allow anyone to be members if they are not involved in real estate somehow. So, less like the general right. public can't be a member. That makes sense. Um, but you know, those MLSs help us with making sure that when you sell a home or buy a home, you're, you, you have all the information you need to make a good decision. Um, but they all have different, you know, I, like I had a buyer that said, I want a hundred acres. No lie. I was pull this up if I can find it. Yeah. A hundred acres. Okay. They wanted, they, they did not want to live in any counties that were only bow hunting only. I'd never heard of that before. Um, they gave me their price range, uh, and they said they wanted a certain amount of the acreage to be wooded, a certain amount of it to be pasture, a certain amount. And I was like, okay, well, here's the problem with that. The criteria, the data that's in the multiple listing service doesn't allow us to get that specific. Exactly. Yep. So I can't say I need five wooded acres. Mm -hmm. All I can do is say five acres. Yeah. Um, and sometimes if you get too specific, you're going to miss out on houses that they may have even considered, right? So I, I tell buyers all the time, I'll, I'll say, look, I'm going to, I'm going to send you everything that's your basic criteria. Some of it, you know, for example, you have to say, weed through it. Yeah. yeah, you do, because there could be a house there that you fell in love with that you would have never seen if I would have put that specific information in. So exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that's what I tell people too. You know, it's there could be a perfect house that you love and you, you know, but maybe it has a one car garage, not a two car garage. You know, it's just like, it, you know, sure. just certain things that I, I would really rather be more broad in my searches. Yes. And then that way, let you as the buyer mm -hmm. pick through what is sent your way. Usually right. it's easy to you in a search and you can pick through that and you can say, okay, yeah. And so that, just so buyers understand too, that we're not sending you these things like intentionally, oh, I know that that's not what they asked for, but I'm going to send right. it anyway. Yeah. This, yeah. This, is, this shows up in the search that we have set up mm -hmm. and it is much more to your advantage as the buyer that we are going to broaden your search and send you more things. And it will send, as soon as it hits the market, it will send you these, um, these listings. Yes. So that's why it's really yeah. important to be mm -hmm. in with the realtor um, and have a search set up with them. Yeah. So that you can do these things as soon as they hit the market. Right. And, you know, keep in mind that let's say you're looking for a four bedroom house. Okay. Um, you know, you may not, buyers may not realize it and sellers may not realize it either. 
if, if there's a room that a seller may be using as a bedroom, but it doesn't have a window for escape, we can't call it a bedroom. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so it's really a three bedroom house with an office. So example, if a buyer says I've got to have four bedrooms, I'll look for three and four bedrooms with an office because Mm -hmm. sometimes that office can be utilized as a bedroom, you know, but, but, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot of times their loan type is a factor. Um, and, um, you know, things like I just said, you know, Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have a window for escape. And honestly, even, even rooms that are in a basement, I ran into this one time, the window, sometimes there's windows in a basement that are, you know, like this, if it's not big enough for a person to get out, they won't count it. It has to be a certain height. So I thought that was Mm -hmm. kind of interesting, but anyway, that's how multiple listing services work. You know, they work, they work to the buyer and seller's advantage. And uh, that's why having representation is so important because we have access to all of that information and a lender and every not, other realtor has access to all that sure. information. Oh, yeah. Who's working with the qualified buyers. Right. Who and, can, can find your house. Right. And a lender will not use comps that are for sale by owner. Mm-hmm. They use comps that are on the open market. So you even the appraiser is going to have to go into a multiple listing service to find good comps. So good conversation. Yeah. Good information. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys next week. All right. Bye. See ya. Bye.